Alright, well here's an interesting little situation. Um, looking at this surface, you have what looks like a bar, a two feet, two foot bar, with wheels at either end. And if there's no acceleration, no nothing, but the bar's just sitting there, which wheel actually supports more weight? And trust me, this is a little counterintuitive, so I I'm just going to kind of work with you on it. Um, first of all, what we need to know is we need to know what that angle is. And I didn't give it to you, so I'm going to give it to you right now. It's 15 degrees, okay? So now we have to kind of draw a quick little free body diagram. I would just skip all the details, all the pleasantries, and draw it real quick. So, you know this is 15 degrees, okay? Well, then what we need to realize is that the force that's going to act on each wheel is going to be actually perpendicular to this surface. And this surface is at a, a 30 degree angle. So just imagine you have your 30 degree angle so it must be something out in this direction, right? We well, are actually correct. That That is, you could actually take the 30 degree angle and just add another 90 and you'll find it. So technically you could do 120. But an interesting way of doing it is, look at this. Here's your 30 degrees, right? That's relative to the horizontal. Well, if you want the perpendicular, just do the same thing, but make sure it's relative to the vertical. Here's your 30 degrees. So it's kind of an interesting way of doing it. I always like to go come back. Once I figure that out, I always like to com come back and relate it to... Um, the ground, or, or I mean the the horizontal plane, just like before. So this would be sixty. So it's just a, it's a matter of preference. But the key point is that we have the vectors that are going to go out at essentially sixty degrees in each in opposite directions, right? Good. So now you're sitting there going, okay, well, my force is going to be, it's going to have to balance out this 10 pound weight, right? 10 pound bar, which is happening in the middle, but how far away is it happening? Well, this distance is going to be 2 feet, 2 feet times cosine of 15 but then half of the bar so divided by 2 so that's what this distance is going to be and it turns out that that is just cosine that is just cosine um, 15 so you can act, you can just work it out that way I like to just keep it there just this whole um, expression because if I don't, then I might forget where it's coming from. So, pick your battles. So let me just do it real quick. We have your summation of f of x, which is going to be negative ax plus bx. is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so we know that essentially bx equals ax. Okay, we know that. So it's almost like you could say that they're symmetric. But anyway, let's, uh, if you couldn't see that, don't worry. You just continue on to the next one. Summation of uh, forces in the y direction. You'd have ay plus by minus 10 equals 0. Okay. Well... 
that doesn't tell us anything. We gotta go to the moments then, right? Moment at A. How about that? Well, you know the distance. It's that cosine 15, right? The distance is cosine 15. times negative 10 plus and then you have to go all the way to the end so that was just the force in the middle now you have to go to all the way to the end to pick up the B side correct so that's just going to be 2 times cosine of 15 and that's our length that's that's like our moment arm times by and that'll equal zero right well what does that equal you can uh... you can kinda see how everything's gonna work out but when you solve this what you're gonna end up with is by is gonna equal five pounds and you're gonna go okay so if we plug it back into FY that's AY plus 5 minus 10 equals 0 that means AY equals 5 so what you're saying is even though they're tilted at weird angles that it looks like they're gonna be taking the same force vertically even though they're tilted and that's true because it has nothing really to do with how high or low one is um, in this example it doesn't matter how high low or um, how high or low one is it has to do with the angle of the ramp that it's sitting on so let's finish up. We can find each of the forces. I'm just going to solve for one of them so we can find it. A of sine 60 is going to be AY. And that's just from like looking at point A. That's this angle being 60. So sine of that. This is A. Mm, AX. This is AY. So. just realize that sine is a y and we have essentially we'll have 5 divided by sine 60 which will equal a and that'll equal 5.77 pounds and I'm here to tell you that b is actually going to be the same thing So it has to do with these forces being essentially opposite. One's going this way, one's going this way, but even though they're at different heights, they are the prime ones that are counteracting each other. So thus they must be equal since they're symmetric. And it's kind of an interesting little concept, but... Um, Later on, you'll actually find that you can get situations um, with varying loads because of these angles. But right now, we're looking at this bar as a rigid body, and that's the only way I want you to look at it. So, let's continue on.